OK, so, so almost everybody doing something like, so the, in, in case you hadn't, in, in case it wasn't obvious to you, you could have asked me if, if it wasn't obvious, but the, the platter is in the xy plane. And so if you curl your hand around the direction that the motion is, if, assuming that's a horizontal platter, then the, your right hand rule tells you, your thumb tells you that the direction is in the positive z direction. The direction of the angular velocity is in the positive z direction. The angular momentum, whoops, I didn't label this, but I should. L is the angular momentum. L is the rotational inertia I times the angular velocity. So it's a little like momentum is the translational inertia, the mass, times the translational velocity V. So P equals M times V. In the same kind of way as that, exactly analogous to that, angular momentum is the rotational inertia I times the angular velocity. So I want to give you a chance at, at feeling rotational inertia. So I'm going to send a, a pair of these around and everybody can, can uh, uh, feel it for themselves. Each of these has exactly the same mass. If I wanted to throw one up into the air, one would be just as hard as the other. They have the same translational inertia. But if you grab them in the middle, you will find out, my left hand's my weak hand, uh, you will find out that one of them is easy to rotate and change its rotation, and the other one, not so easy. In fact, I would hurt myself if I tried to do that with this one. So one of them, if you grab them in the center, you, first of all, you can weigh them. They're the same mass. You can compare the two masses. But one of them, if you grab them in the center, is really easy to change its rotation, and one of them is really hard. And that tells you something about that, that, first of all, that objects with the same mass can have different rotational inertia. And it's, it's probably something you'll understand physically. Also, you just, gotta, you just have to think about where the mass is. These have the same mass. One of them has all of the mass right near the center where I, have it, where I have my hand. One of them does. And one of them has the mass out on the ends. And I think you will know which is which just by trying to rotate it. Is it good to have the mass near the center, the, near the point where you're rotating it, or is it bad to have the mass near the point you're rotating it? So if you could check those out, pass them around, give everybody a chance to uh, experience different rotational inertias, even though the mass is exactly the same. All right, so right-hand rule told you that the angular velocity is in the z direction. I would also conclude from that, or you could, that since the angular momentum is in the same direction as the angular velocity, that right-hand rule also tells you the direction of the angular momentum. L is in the z direction. Any questions about... All right, so I wrote something here. I wrote, how do you, I wrote how you change the angular momentum. How am I going to change the angular momentum? Well, I think you, you know something about how, because I've been doing it up here. If I wanted to produce, so this is zero angular momentum. If it's rotating counterclockwise, then it, it would have angular momentum toward you. 
How do I make it ro rotate counterclockwise? Well, I can push down on it, and that'll make it rotate counterclockwise. But there's other things I can do that'll, that'll also make it rotate counterclockwise. I can push to the right, well, your left. I can push to your left, that makes it rotate counterclockwise. Is there a way I can pull up on it and make it rotate counterclockwise instead of pushing down? How many say there's a way I can pull up on it and make it rotate counterclockwise? Okay, you all know that. Uh, if I pull up on one side, I make it rotate counterclockwise. If I pull up on the other side, I make it rotate clockwise. Where the force is applied and what force is applied are both really important to what happens. If I want the angular momentum to change toward you, so it's zero, and later on I want it to be rotating counterclockwise so that there'll be an angular momentum toward you, so I want the change to be toward you, then I have to put on a force that causes that change toward you, and that depends on where I put it. And so we need another word for, for forces and how they cause things to rotate, and that word is going to be torque. And it says it, says it up there. It's a kind of rotational force. Any force that you apply to something will be applying a torque to it. Maybe zero torque, but, but it'll, it's a torque you can calculate. So, I, I am just going to mention this for those of you who, who have uh, taken a, a class in vectors and know what a, a vector product or a cross product is, but if you don't, it doesn't matter because we'll never ask you. What? <laughs> so this is just for your own benefit. How do you measure the magnitude? So here's a force. This is a wrench. That's the top of a bolt, bolted into something. If you want to rotate that bolt around point A, so point A is our axis of rotation, or at least the axis of rotation comes toward you through point A. If we want to rotate that around the axis of rotation uh, in a clockwise fashion, then this force applied over here on the right will do that, or at least you're trying to do that. Do you know that this force applied here will cause that bolt to rotate? No, you don't. I don't know how many of you have tried to, tried to tighten a bolt with a wrench, but, you know, if it's already tight, then you can't do much more to it even if you try. So, you can't make some, this thing rotate if something is already counteracting what you're, the force you're putting on. So, this force is going to cause a clockwise torque because it would try to rotate this thing around clockwise. But it does not necessarily change the angular momentum. It doesn't necessarily cause the bolt to rotate because there might be torques in the other direction. If this bolt is really tight, then there will be friction forces in the other direction. And, uh, and that's that. You're not going to be able to tighten it more. To calculate how big this torque is, you probably know something about torques. You know, probably, I'm guessing, that if R, the distance from the axis of rotation out to where the force is actually applied, that's what this R is, it's a vector from the axis of rotation out to where the force is applied, if that vector is big, if you apply the force farther away, you, you might know already that it'll be easier to rotate the thing, and it, so the torque depends on the magnitude of R. The magnitude of the torque depends on how far the force is applied from the axis of rotation. It also depends on how hard you push, so it depends on the force. And for reasons that we'll talk about in a second, 
and, and you already know about. So I'm going to ask you something that you know a lot about and we'll see why it works out. Um, it depends on the sign of the angle between them. Now I drew this angle here, theta, but if you accidentally, so you could draw two lines here, a line through R and a line through F, and this is the theta that you would use. But if you accidentally use this other value of theta, the sign of that is just the same as the sign of the theta that I gave you. So either of those two angles is going to work in this equation, so you don't have to sweat exactly what angle it is between the two. So even though there's a small angle and a big angle between these two vectors, uh, either one will work. The sign of both of those are the same. So I'm going to go back to that in a second. I want to ask you this one first. So I've written this down. The magnitude of the torque is the force times r times the sine of theta. These are a bunch of pictures of a door, a doorway. Here's the wall, there's the wall. Each of these doors is, are, is hinged on the left. And you're trying to open the door, and all of you know how to open a door, so this first part uh, sh shouldn't, shouldn't be too hard. These force vectors, the length of the vector tells you how strong the force is. So these are force vectors applied to all of them. You tell me which is the largest counterclockwise torque. This is about which is, wh how, you, how would you apply the force to make opening the door the easiest? Since all of you know how to open doors, I'm hoping that, uh, that it's not very hard. Although you can also think torque is the magnitude of the force times the length r, how far the force is applied from the axis of rotation, times the sine of the angle between them. 